gamers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to let people see me out here working. You know what well, that good, is? Well, you sweat. Thank you. You're working hard. <laughs> All right. I'm a politician. There's nothing dirty about the term. It's those who've carried it that have sullied it. But I'm a politician. Ernie's a true representative. He doesn't have any ulterior motives. He's not, he's not political. He is truly a representative of the people. There is a group that is organized to help me. But I told them that I'm going to work too because I'm never going to let anybody do more for me than I'll do for myself. Ernie Chambers is a maverick. He is fiercely independent and he holds no party affiliations. I can't think of an organization Ernie has actually ever really belong to act an active in, okay? I think if there is such an animal, it's the community, okay, that he belongs to. It's the community that he represents. I don't know if you remember me. I knew you as a little kid many, many years ago. Chambers was born in this neighborhood, the son of a local minister. Other than a stint in the army, he has lived here all his life. That tells people how to vote for me. I know y'all aren't old enough to vote. but so, Well, you are, so if you haven't registered, uh-huh. For over 25 years, he has represented the 11th Legislative District, Omaha's near north side, the largest concentration of African Americans in the state. Largely overlooked, this community has confronted poverty and indifference for generations. It was from here that Chambers emerged onto the political scene out of the turbulent and volatile years of the 1960s. Blacks in our community in the 1950s and 1960s found their aspirations, their hopes dashed time and time again. It was a matter of power. It was a matter of a lack of power, you might say, because there were certain places that black folks could not go. Uh, you could not, you did not, were not able to live where you wanted to. There were certain jobs you were restricted to. Our community, you know, in effect had signs posted all over saying, no blacks here. In the early 1960s, the push for employment and housing was in full swing. In Omaha, Negroes were segregated into decaying neighborhoods by restrictive housing practices. The kind of situation which lends itself to the restriction of persons and the choice of their residency bring about a lot of undesirable circumstances. They take on and become ghettoized individuals. They took their grievances to City Hall, but were unable to win open housing ordinances needed to alleviate the severe overcrowded living conditions. To bring attention to their plight, nonviolent mass demonstrations were organized. Back in those days, it was a day of organization, all right, with a purpose in mind. And the purpose was to achieve a better way of living, to realize the American dream. If there is such an animal, 